Amy Board, we struck a nerve, my Let friend. Let me tell you, you're not doing your job until you struck a nerve. You know what I'm saying? In the content game, that's true. <laughs> and we learned that I'm not the only one that's got some concerns about I the state know. of the community. I know. This was deep. Go into it. Tell me everything. Tell me all your thoughts. Well, I mean, we so if you saw the social breakout video mm-hmm. on different platforms, there was a lot of engagement. There were different comments. But you DMs, emails, a warning texts. warning to the, com- uh, the community if you hadn't heard it. Please go Correct. back and yes. um, see it um, about some of our advocacy efforts and some of the things that uh, are maybe a little idle at the moment. And I felt like for weeks, if not a few months, that this was something someone needed to say at some point, yeah. that like if things don't change on yeah. the course we're on, we're setting ourselves up for trouble. Uh, the point I want to make, I'm glad it resonated the way it did. I Me anticipated too. it would, but the degree to which it did and, and like advocacy leaders yeah. and some pretty big chairs yeah. coming forward, I'm glad it resonated. To me, this confirms the problem. Right. What I don't have are the answers, <laughs> right? Like, so people, I've been asked a lot, like, can I talk to you about, I want to talk more to you about that. And it's like, I'm happy to, I'm happy to talk. Maybe we should do, we've talked about this previously, yeah. like some kind of round table here on yeah. Bloodstream. Let's get ideas flowing. But it feels at least like step one is achieved. We are all staring at the same problem. Step two, answers. I have ideas. I don't have answers. But let's keep sharing ideas and let's not look to one person or one entity or for one solution. 100%. This is a multifactorial, yes. no pun intended, problem yes. and it needs to be addressed as such. 100%. And I won't talk about this too long, but to bring some of the conversations I think that some of the higher ups are having into the light a little bit more to be transparent yeah. about some of the work and the conversations that I know are happening. And the challenges that they talk about yes. each, to each other. Because they're in the trenches as well on a different level could help, I think, some of the folks here that are maybe listeners, you and me, that are truly grassroots, that see this from, um, you know, our vantage point, our viewpoint, who are passionate about the health and the stability and the sustainability of our community and how we can work together. So love, love that you brought it up and love that it was so richly um, replied to, if you will. Well, nonprofit nerd, Amy Board. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, that's all I had. I just wanted yeah. to call that back. No, but thank great, you, and uh, we'll come back to that non that that round table idea oh, for at, sure. at some future point. Always. You recently got I off a plane a from, from we do love round table <laughs> from Florida. You were down there for the coalition coalition the coalition, coalition of hemophilia bees symposium. Yes, it was in Orlando, Florida. What a great energy that conference had. So many people. I saw so many of my Colorado families, which was um, I will just say I just want to say it was a highlight of my um, whole month. Uh, you know who you are. Um, um, it was wonderful. And we brought um, our science fair installation so for cool. the first time. We have pared down our science fair into a roadshow um, situation. It's still humongous. I thought it would be like, you know, little and cute and tiny, like we'd have this little I baby know the liver. Pictures. I was like, oh, it's still huge. It's 100%. <laughs> like we were like, oh, this is maybe less huge. Uh, yeah, it was like, this is barely smaller. Um, but it's great. And we're going to be traveling around the country this year. Um, phenomenal. Our next stop is in Michigan, Spring Fest in Michigan. So that is going to be wonderful. So the science fair was fantastic. And we announced our brand new documentary film, Elite Athletes, um, showcasing elite athletes in the hemophilic community. I have nothing to do with this documentary. I absolutely mean, nothing. nothing. I don't know about it. Absolutely. It's kind no, of overstating. Literally, you at least work for the company. I do it, work I for the company, but like I haven't done. Usually I, I do like, well, I've done this thing and I haven't I haven't even written a word for it but i'm so proud of it it is so exciting and the stories um that are being highlighted are just fantastic and the response has been wonderful which has been really lovely yeah so it was announced at the coalition's meeting uh they announced it in person and then put out stuff through social that you may have seen uh, us here share as well on elite athletes with hemophilia profiling a group different people from around the world different sports different reasons all operating at an elite level. And what does that mean? What does that look like? And, you know, there are pieces of this project. So like Amy, I'm I'm very much, um, I'm I'm on the sidelines for this. I've helped uh, big picture casting, sort of story producing at the very early development stages. And now Rob, who uh, was our producer, mountain director and cinematographer for Bombardier Blood is directing that with, with support here from the Believe team. And, you know, Bombardier Blood is an interesting thing to mention in, flow, Mm. to use a bloodstream punny word, Mm. um, uh, with this film, because I felt this a bit during Bombardier Blood. I felt this recently a little bit with some of the response to elite athletes. I think about camp back in the day. I think about school growing up. There is this, I'm going to call it an antiquated idea, that if you have hemophilia, sports are bad. 
Mm. Or sports are a no. Or sports that need to be heavily restricted. Okay. Yeah. If we if we wind the clock back to when people had to sit in the hospital for hours at a time to get fresh, fresh frozen, frozen plasma, plasma slowly dripped into right. their body, which would accomplish barely anything as right. it relates to hemophilia, that's a terrible time to go out and play competitive soccer. I agree with that. Very bad idea. But the treatments over the last number of decades have come a very long way. The strategies and the practices have come a very long way. The understanding of the musculoskeletal and psychological, emotional health of people, young people especially, has come a long way. Sports are important. Athletics are important. They're here, a part here. of our culture. Right. They're a part of how young people connect with each other outside of an academic environment. They learn teamwork. They learn teamwork. They learn how to push themselves to new levels. They learn how to have Manage a shared goal bodies. with a bunch of other people yeah. working together with each of you. Yeah. With your unique. There's so much good. And kids want. It's not like parents have to say to their kids. I mean, yeah. I know I'm generalizing, but go with me here. Hey, be interested in sports. Right. It's just part of the culture. And I just want to mention that you and I are not athletes. We both well, have theater that's degrees. Tr- my God, Amy, like, <laughs> gotta call it out like that. <laughs> I mean, I know we're both sports nuts, but I, I don't. I'm gonna go get my Peloton scores. I'm I gonna, know. I'm gonna post them. You know what? <laughs> you there in the camera? She keeps up this. I'm putting Peloton stuff behind me. I'll prove my weight in, in sports, but you're also right. I'm not an athlete, neither are you. <laughs> but I feel very passionately about this yeah. because. Being born with hemophilia, being born with any rare chronic disease means you're going to be hearing no, you can't from people who think they know better for a lot of your life. And they don't always know better. And they don't always know when things change. They don't always know when there's new developments. They don't always know when you're working double, triple as hard as some of the people on your team so that you with hemophilia can show up. So anybody who wants to say that sports and hemophilia is not something that deserves the spotlight, that we should not be highlighting the achievements of people like Ricardo, an ultra marathoner who wins ultra marathons as a 50-year-old man with hemophilia B and is doing it for his grandson, like... If that's not worthy of being highlighted, I should quit filmmaking. I should stop being a storyteller. So I understand that there's other things that we want to make sure get their due attention. We want to make sure there's programs and education. And But I'm, I guess, anticipating that this story thread that's mm. existed for me for 37 years, mm-hmm. that I would like to believe in the year of gene therapy, mm-hmm. years after Hem Libra in 2023, yeah, Altuvio, longer acting factor yeah. eight is now like there's so many treatment options that can be tailored for the individual. Mm-hmm. Why are we just outright shutting off? Nope, that's sports. Bad. Nope, right. it's got to be this. So, right. Ooh, I didn't expect to be like that. Uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I'm kind of feeling a little, a little tingly. But do you know what I mean? It's like these no. th- these people are doing what yes. they're doing, whether we're there or not. And it's worthy of celebration. And it's also worthy of um, for an audience that doesn't participate in that. I, th- I think that was a conversation back in Bombardier Blood. It's like, not everyone's going to f- climb Everest. I can't wait to not do that. <laughs> and yet there is something really powerful about um, watching people who have the thing that you have um, struggle with their barriers and learn how to adapt and manage their body in order to do something. You will be able to take away something from that because each one of those um, patients that we highlight has had mornings where they, they can't get up, they can't walk, they can't do some of the things that we have had to do as well. Mm-hmm. And like learning how to manage that, learning how to take care of your body is just something that I think is um, unique in him. In in, in humanity, we we all have to do it, whether we have hemophilia or not. Yeah, and not all of us are blessed with some of those passions or or those desires or even like the the body to do it. I've told this story a million times. I wanted to be a ballerina more than anything in the world, mm. and God did not grant me the lower half to do that. Mm. I am a beautiful ballerina from the waist up. I am so pretty, and I don't have the lower half to do it and i just and i and i just think that it's important to you know i i think almost be um celebratory of that celebratory of our uniqueness and this is this is a story that i deserve that deserves to be told and i i think it's cool so i i guess we struck another nerve I... <laughs> amy board two for two two for two <laughs> two nerves two struck